Oh. Uh, what episode is it? 33. Welcome back to episode 33 of Drumroll, please. Uh, we spoke to the very, very nice, no, that sounds <laughs> terrible, doesn't it? We spoke to the awesome Kyle McDougall. I'm sure you all know who he is. Uh, we discovered him a, a few years back through YouTube and started following him on Instagram and you know, followed his kind of journey ever since. I was certainly inspired by his kind of, I don't know, his his work that was in, in America. Yeah, his photography, but but more like how he talks about the process, I guess, because he's quite open about his process, which, which we spoke to him about, didn't we? We spoke to him about how he finds his locations and how he goes about shooting them. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah, really interesting. Yeah, um, totally different. Like, there's no one... I've never met anybody that goes into that level of detail of planning a shoot. Like me and you, when we meet up, we're like, where are we going? Uh, we go for a little walk. Yeah. Where should we go? Mm, yeah. Know. But it was really interesting, wasn't it? Because he kind of plans it out. He has kind of certain shots in mind um, mm -hmm. from the kind of research that he does. And if you don't know already, he, he's recently moved to the UK. Uh, well, not recently, but in recent times, um, which, you know, he's seen as a new challenge, which is really exciting to, for him. And it's kind of, you know, it's exciting for us to kind of be, a lot, be on that journey with him because he documents it so well, right? It's not like, you know, he just goes out for a walk. He, he, I mean, his videos to me are almost like, almost like tutorials in a way, even though he's not going into like specific details about how he's shooting or anything like that but the way he goes about shooting it inspires me to go out and do the same i think that's i think that's yeah. quite important i mean it's a great episode and yeah we were so honored that he you know agreed to come on to our our little podcast mm. um but yeah yes super super honored to have him on and it was great to talk to him on a one-on-one -on -one basis yeah um so yeah enjoy the episode if you've got any questions for kyle we'll talk to him again anyway um but yeah send us a message and we'll pass that on um and in front news uh see you later luke thanks for in the background i thought i'd lost that ah so, front beaners I go, yeah i forgot about them if you don't know already you well you just don't check your phone enough because we've got some beaners made they're awesome um super comfy good quality and we've still got a few for sale gray is sold out but mint black and pink that luke is rocking right there is still very much for sale um there's not drop, no, drop the message big it up a little bit there's only a few remaining well there's only a few remaining <laughs> there isn't many but we're, we're we bought enough to kind of know that we wouldn't sell out i think it's fair to say and, mm. and in all honesty we kind of don't want to sell out because when front launches we want to make sure that we can have products on there to sell um and you know i don't know about you but i haven't pushed it with any of kind of like my friends or family and stuff like that a couple of friends have but they're kind of into photography but i didn't want to just kind of get all yeah. the stock gone because i kind of want them to be for photographers right mm. uh, and and the fans of us which is which is awesome um, so yeah, if you do want to be in a beanie, drop us a message or follow us on Instagram, drop us a message on there. Um, and yeah, we can sort you out. And we've sent we've sent all around the world now, which is insane to me. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. Um, in terms of the website, it is coming. It is coming. We're working hard on it. We've actually had a meeting today about it. What yeah. time is it now? 10 to 9 at night. Um, but yeah, we've been working hard on that. Um, the bean is, I don't know if you, you can leave this bit in, but the, the colour of the bean is somewhat suggest a little bit what the website might look like. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get that <laughs> from that, are they? Are you, but yeah. yeah, sure. The website will have a front logo on it. There you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, enjoy the episode with Kyle. Um, super grateful to have him on again. It's a really interesting listen. Um, Give it a thumbs up if you like. Subscribe to the channel. We've got loads of new videos coming, um, as well as some awesome podcasts coming up um, that we've already pre-recorded and we've already got some great ones put in the diary for 2022. Um, and there's a few other things that we're going to try out in the next kind of 
six months as well as the launch of the website that like i've like we've said before that is our main focus to get that launched get it going but we've got some other ideas in terms of content and what we're going to share with you guys and what you guys can get involved in um but yeah enjoy drum roll please Thanks for your time, Kyle. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah, you bet. Definitely supporting what we're doing in terms of, you know, we're we're not to your level. So, yeah, we really appreciate you coming on. We, we've definitely learned a lot from you subconsciously without you knowing last year. So, um, yeah, it's great to have you on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to do it. Um, but like I said, we do always start off by asking how you got into photography, what 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 drew you to it, I suppose, and what content, what what inspires you to continue doing it, I guess. So uh, yeah, you want to give us a, a brief history lesson, that'd be great. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, so like two part, like what got me into it, I guess, was like years ago back in like my early 20s, maybe right when I was around 20, I moved out to Western Canada and uh, like amazing scenery and landscape out there, you know, Rocky Mountains and just got a, yeah, bought a camera and just got into it that way. Did landscape photography for like probably 12 years after that. Like that was my main genre just because like the combination of obviously like being passionate for the outdoors and then uh like photography was a good reason to go out and explore and stuff so yeah just like an intrigue and then it, I kind of got hooked right away like a lot of people do with mm. it and got into that genre and did that for a long time until the point uh where I started to burn out a little bit and lose interest and then um kind of rediscovered film I went to school for film uh years ago but kind of got back into it about uh, like five years ago. And then that sparked like a, yeah, rediscovery of the medium of new artists of, you know, all this work I didn't know about. And then that's kind of put me on the track that I'm on uh, now. But what, what keeps me going is, uh, is an interesting question, just because like a lot has changed for me over the past, even two years, moving yeah. from uh, like doing video production as a career, mainly now to doing uh, like this online social media world of photography so it's been like a, hu a huge learning curve and certainly like the risk of burnout is like high so mm. it's really been like learning to balance that and stay uh like stay motivated and, and make time to like go out and shoot I just last week spent a couple of days going up the coast and shooting and that was like a you know re-energize me a little bit because it's easy mm. to get caught up in these like uh, times where you just are going out to like make a video about something and that's when you do your your photography so it's uh yeah that's kind of what keeps me going now is like tr trying to make time for those like uh photography sessions where you go and it's just like back to the basics shooting photos you aren't worried about talking about it or showing anyone your process or anything you're just making images so that's uh yeah that's really i, I really like that because uh, i think it was actually on one of your more recent videos i'm not too sure when this podcast will go out but uh, i mean we'll probably drop a link to it below but you were talking about how you actually find locations to go and shoot um you know using google maps having yeah. a look and you know going through different locations and seeing where it might fit into to your liking right and i don't know that really resonated with me it made me want to do it and i don't know if it's just me being dumb and never thinking about doing that <laughs> or or if i've just never tried it because I, I I think I actually left a comment or something. And I was just like, it kind of blew me away a little bit because I always kind of thought, or the, the photos that I kind of plan to take, should we say, or that I've seen a like a come from where I've seen a location before or seen sure. something happening. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of make a mental note or you write it down. You're like, right, I'm going to go get that shot. But I've never kind of thought about going somewhere where I haven't just stumbled across before. Do yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or even if you kind of go on holiday or get, you know, go away for a couple of days, weekend, whatever it might be. I always think, well, I'll take my camera because I want to document it. Even if the photos and all that, they're, they're, they're my photos. They're my sure. memories of takes. Um, but yeah, I've never thought about kind of going somewhere specifically to take photos that I've never been to, I guess. Yeah. But I didn't know if that was more of a, is that the, the side of you that's like, well, I need to make a video or is that the kind of, no, this is exactly what I want to do. I just so happen to be documenting it. Yeah, no, that is what I want. Like that is what I, half of what I love about photography is like, 
so much of my work has always been road trip. You know, a lot of my American West stuff was made during like a, an 11 month road trip me and my wife were on. Uh, so even now, like what I love is like going to these like rural places, you know, like the end of the roads, like the side roads and like just seeing what you find. So, uh, yeah, Google maps is amazing for that. Like I was using it. I went out and shot today, um, down near Dungeness, what I'm, which I'm sure a lot of people uh, from England have, have heard about. But uh, just using Google Maps, you find like I, 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 you almost find like little hints of things. You know, you explore an area yeah. and then you go there, and then you can find everything. So I think for me, it's always been like this like sense of like discovery and like anticipation for what you might find. I mean, sometimes you you drive forever and you don't find anything. But uh, yeah. I would say no, that's a huge part of my work is just going to these small little communities and like looking for for scenes and and, and seeing what you can find. And I'm guessing that kind of research of going potentially going somewhere new, you will still find new things there, even oh. that you haven't seen from doing the research. Yeah, absolutely. Like I would say like nine times out of 10, the things that you think, like the things that you find on Google Maps that excite you, uh, you show up and maybe they aren't as good as you thought. And then there's all sorts of other stuff there, or maybe there's nothing. So yeah, it's like, yeah, there's like a little bit of like anticipation and, and uh, curiosity of what you'll find in these areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. It's is that something that's like easier to do now you're here than rather than where you were before? Because like it's such a smaller like place you can get from one town to the next or one city to the next in a few hours rather than like driving for hours and hours and seeing maybe nothing. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't I I guess it's easier in a sense that yeah, you can cover so much more ground. Like things here, the interesting thing to me is like things change so quickly, right? Like mm -hmm. where I am just uh, like west southwest of london um you know i can drive like two hours and i'm in wales or you know two hours the other way and i'm by the coast so like there's all of this ver uh, variety which is really interesting but at the same time it's harder here to definitely harder here to find like open rural spa yeah. like spaces like everything is very like congested you know you're like which is unique but for me it's like that's been a huge adjustment is like you know, even you go into these small towns, but the roads are all twisty and there's houses everywhere. Like it's, it's hard to find those like wide open spaces that have like, you know, like the yeah. simplified landscape with the little building or like a car or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. It's quite interesting. You talk about that. Cause I was actually listening to your podcast, the contact sheet. And when you were talking to Jason Lee, I think it was around the same sort of time as he brought out his book. I want to say is late. Uh, I think, I have it somewhere. It's <laughs> into the into the gold rush into the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure you spoke to him around that sort of time. Yeah, and, I think just before. Yeah. Yeah, just before. Yeah, and um, I, I was listening to that a couple of months ago, and it was quite funny to hear you two talk about going away for two days, but you might only shoot one or two rolls of film, right? Because the road is so long that you can drive for ages, and then you find something. And yeah. then, you know, you'll shoot that. And then it's another two hours drive. But here in the UK, you can kind of get wherever you want within a couple of hours, right? Yeah. There yeah. Is open road. Which is kind it's, of it's cool, though. It's like a new challenge. And like the pl those places are there. Like what I actually, what I found really interesting was when I was moving over here, um, so many people, because obviously like if you're from England wherever, or wherever you, you're from, you get used to like your yeah. area and everything becomes normal. And you kind of almost like build these like, you build up like the, this like thought of what that place is. So so many people, or no, I shouldn't say so many, but I definitely had some people reach out to me and be like, oh, like, you know, what, what, I'm curious to see what you're going to shoot here. You know, it's so boring. I've lived here my whole life. And then I was like, I'm here and it's certainly different, but like, you know, I'm going to all these places and I'm like, there's all this really cool stuff that's super interesting. Obviously they're like fresh set of eyes. Um, yeah. and, and, I, and I know how places get, like even when I, uh, when I go back home to Canada, if I'm gone for six months, all of a sudden the place where I'm, where I grew up, I'm like, oh man, like there's all these images that I never saw before just because mm -hmm. I had that time away that like disconnect and uh, you start to see like places with a little bit of like, uh, yeah, new potential, I guess you could say. It's quite interesting to think about just because, um, you know, like I, I really like, I, I've been really enjoying your photos, not your videos that you've been making since you've been here in the UK. And it wasn't that I didn't like the ones before, mm -hmm. because most English photographers, I'm sure, would give up a lung to go to somewhere in America and drive, you know, a long empty road and find a gas station that's abandoned or something, because you just don't have them here, right? For the most part, right? It's not as easy. Um, so, you know, 
when I looked at your work there, it was just jealousy, it, but in a good way, right? It was like <laughs> motivating jealousy because I'm like, I'm never going to be able to go and do that or, you know, not as accessible sure, as it, sure. it was for you. But then seeing your work here in the UK, I was saying to Luke earlier, it was like, it's interesting to see it through your eyes because like you were just saying, like the mundane to us, something that we would kind of never think about picking up the camera for is kind of like a fresh feeling for you. For sure. Yeah. But it's nice seeing it and seeing how you photography, uh, photograph that and seeing why you're photographing whatever scene it might be. Um, or, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a landscape or whatever it might be, doc- document style. But it's just a really, it's like a fresh, it's like a, you know, it's like a kick to say, like, there is stuff here. You just got to go out and, and find it. Yeah. It, yeah. And I, like I said, I think that happens to all of us. Like the same thing would probably happen to like people coming to make work where I'm from back in in Canada, right? Like, you know, fresh set of eyes. And I will, I will say like, I've been here for about a year and a half now, full time. And, uh, this, so last week I went up to the Norfolk, Norfolk Mm -hmm. coast. I I don't know if that's how you say it. And I spent a couple days up there. I actually was going to shoot a video, like a trip video. And, uh, I just like had such a good, I, I probably had made well i haven't seen the images yet i need to get them developed but i'm most ex- like images i'm most excited about since like probably my last trip out west a couple of years ago so yeah. and and it, it feels like it's the first work i've like created here where it's like okay this this is maybe the stuff so it, it like for me even it's been a huge adjustment i would say mainly because like the area that i live right now i i've been shooting nonstop just because like you know, every photographer knows how it is like regardless of where you are even if it's not you know working for you you're still gonna dabble yeah. and shoot stuff and maybe it's frustrating but um it's certainly been like a change because where i am right now it's like there's a lot of like urban sprawl before you can finally get to anything and obviously with like lockdowns then uh, i had some issues with the driver's license for a while like i haven't been able to travel much so uh I've been keeping busy here and I've created some stuff I'm happy with, but I, I feel like now, like the stuff I was just making last week, I'm like, okay, this is like, I'm getting that feeling that I did when I first created work in the American West. And, and maybe yeah. this is going to be like the, the main focus for now. So uh, it's certainly been like, uh, it takes, I think any new place takes time to, to really like figure out and you can't rush the process. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's quite interesting as well, but you moved here, you said about a year and a half ago, right? Which is, give or take the start of the pandemic. Yeah, um, yeah. I so you kind of see it. You kind of got to see the UK empty for the first time, a bit like we did, right? True, so true, yeah. And then yeah. you've kind of seen it get busier and busier over the last 18 months or so. And I bet it looks different now to what it is when you first came out. Yeah, it's been, it's been a weird, I mean, the whole experience has just been strange for sure. But if, I yeah. mean, things feel normal. It's It feels like... For me, it feels like home here now. Like that, yeah. like I remember when I used to come here for trips and when I first moved here, there was still like that, you know, when you go to a new country and like, even, it, I mean, it's not like it's a huge culture shock moving from Canada to, to England, but there was still like, you know, different cars and different brands and different food. Like there's a little bit of this, like, um, like it's not quite home feeling. Yeah. Which is cool. Right. Like it's, yeah. it's like when you go travel anywhere, but now it's like everything is normal, you know, like, yeah. a, a all, all these car brands, you know, driving on the other side of the road, I go to the grocery store and like everything's <laughs> common and I have my brand and my things I buy. So, uh, yeah, it's certainly like, uh, I've like adapted now, I guess you could say. That's cool. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. it reminded me of, uh, there's a group of people or maybe there's a few of them who meet up in London on Christmas day every year to shoot London when it's empty because okay. the idea being you'd never ever see it empty um you know in the middle of the day to be able to go and take photos but I'm guessing that's not such a novelty anymore like I'm wondering if those people still meet up because we've seen it empty for you know months and months on end or you know certainly like weeks at a time so maybe it's not kind of um the novelty is kind of worn off now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe people yeah. don't want to see empty streets yeah. <laughs> anymore. But there was an image, um, just to go back to like we were saying about like looking at things with fresh eyes as well. On I think it was one of the most recent videos um, where you took a photo of it's just a branch and with some cherries behind it. Or oh some yeah. Kind of red yeah. fruit, maybe not cherries. But when I was watching that, I was just like, no, no, you're not. Are you really going to take a photo of a branch? Like, wow. Well, <laughs> I mean, when I saw the video, was, was this the one that was along like the barbed wire fence? 
No, it was right, before, it was... right before that one, yeah. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. Actually, I'm pretty sure I remember it, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, so I, then I, when I, you see it, it's like, oh, cool, okay, yeah, I can see what, like, the kind of photographic, um, like, the aesthetically pleasing nature of that image now, but that's like, I got that there outside that door, like, I would never <laughs> think of, like, going and taking that. So we, we have this conversation a lot where we go somewhere new, or somewhere we haven't been for a while and we're like oh, like you know get through a couple of rolls of film in a couple of hours and then we go somewhere nearby to where we live and you're just like well it's boring isn't it and I know everybody does that with their own thing but uh, I like seeing things like that image you took just because it makes you look at things in a different kind of way really. Yeah and you know what I think that's the best like I think taking that from other people's work is what's most important, but making, cause like I do it all the time. Like I'll see um, people's images from locations that I've been to. And I'm like, Oh, like that is like, why didn't I ever think of shooting it that like, of course those thoughts go on in your head, but obviously like, I think we all do the things the way that we do them because like there is this like um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Like, I think we all approach our photography with like this um, some sort of like intuition right? Like, it's not like everyone goes yeah. to make a photo and you stop and you spend 15 minutes going, okay, this is over there. And like a lot of the times you, like you build up this intuition where you just kind of point the camera, you give it a little bit of thought and you shoot. Yeah. And I think like, that's something that you, everyone has to like really honor. I think it's good to like take, you know, obviously um, inspiration from other people's work and like try new things and stuff like that. But it like, I, I just, I do the same thing all the time where I'm like, you know, why didn't I shoot that? But then if I go to that place, it's like, I always end up with an image that's just done in the style that I would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but I agree. Like, I think it is cool to see stuff like that. I've been in certain similar, uh, like similar situations where it maybe makes you think a little differently the next time you go out and shoot. Because, mm, uh, yeah. You saw something that maybe like, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily have done. Uh, I feel like photography is the only kind of thing as well, where I would say it's the only thing where you could be with a group of people, right? Let's say there's five of you going out on a little fire walk or just individually, whatever it might be. But if you were with other people, you'd never see the same photos twice, even if you're with another photographer. Totally. Yeah. But also there's kind of no jealousy, right? Like, because it's only ever kind of inspirational to see someone else's view on something. For sure. So I, and like, I remember watching a video the other day and it was someone that was going to take photos of like a skyscraper somewhere. I can't even remember where it was. And it had been photographed a hundred times before or millions of times before. But the photographer knew that and yet they still wanted to, to go and shoot that and see how the results would turn out from their eyes. So from maybe someone who doesn't know so much about, not necessarily photography, but would just look at a photo and go, that's a building, that's where that is. It's interesting from a photographer's point to go, well, why have they chose that angle or that composition or that film stock or that, what, do you know what I mean? Like, and it's it's really interesting, but you never get jealous. Like, you get jealous of the results sometimes, but <laughs> still you're kind of motivated to be like, well, that's how I want to approach wherever I'm going tomorrow or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that is the cool thing is that everyone like, for the most part, everyone has their own little like unique take and ways of doing things. Obviously there are like, there are like the, um, you know, 15 or 20 or hundred or however many like specific locations and shots around the world where it's like the same composition of the same thing, yeah. the same. But I think oftentimes people just get inspired to go to those places and like, there's some excitement to like try and recreate maybe something like they liked, but, um, I almost think that's like one of the most important things to keep in mind at all times, especially with social media where you are seeing a lot of images and you can, you can see like people's work and how it's being like received by the general public. And it's at times you can, you can, it can influence you to do things certain ways if you think that that's what like people like, but I think it's really important to like, yeah, just like stick with, stick with your your way of doing things, you know, take inspiration from other people's stuff. But like, again, I think we all have like, all of us have this like way we point our camera at things and way we process things and way we talk about our work. And it's maybe some of it's similar, but I think we all have like a, a little unique way of, of working that's important to, to kind of honor. Yeah, that's the um, analog repeat thing on Instagram. I don't know if you've seen that account. So which one, sorry? They called analog repeat. Oh, uh, it's, I'm sure I've probably seen yeah. it a, a couple it's of times. basically yeah. somebody who just posts screenshots of, well, like a little 
quid like 12 or something of basically the same photo and it will be like a street in LA or a basketball hoop or something like that but I think yeah. it seems a bit mean sometimes um because but sometimes it is a bit like okay yeah that's the exact same photo and there's like a skateboarder coming across so like everybody's waiting for the same type of shot and that's yeah. a bit boring but also it's like that's how you learn if if it totally. didn't exist we'd be finding those images in books or on blogs or wherever it was and people would be recreating them anyway so you just like you've got this repository for it so it almost feels like it's happening more but it probably always used to happen anyway but no mm. yeah i mean i mean yeah totally I, I i think i know the account you're talking about now as i hear you <laughs> you describe yeah. it but honestly like it's instagram right to round up uh 10 similar shots of something out of millions or yeah. 100,000 yeah. or whatever i mean regardless like uh, i get that people that's probably an account that someone is making because they think it's funny but yeah. my worry with that there's also like within the film photography world at times as it's grown there's people who there's all this kind of nonsense about like oh people only shoot film because it's cool like all of that stuff where people are like specifically pointing out like oh trends or hipsters or this like I just look at that as like discouraging a potential newcomer to film yeah. uh, at, you know discouraging them from finding something that may do a lot for them like I not to go like all off on a tangent on that one but I guess with like what I think about is like the, one of the most important things with photography for me uh, is not only like the work I create, but everything else that's done for me. Right. So like, yeah. even like how, like mentally helping me through like, you know, tough times in my life, like nothing crazy, but it's just so much more than like the image. Right. So to make anything that like discourages other people from like trying something, whatever that camera is or whatever the format or brand or whatever they want to shoot. Like, I, I think that stuff just sucks. I think like if anything, we should be encouraging as many people as possible to like try out the craft. Uh, if that's like, if they want to just make photos and put them on Instagram or if they want to try and be like the next, uh, you know, world famous artist, I think, uh, oh, I think it's over. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going for, man. I'm almost there. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. I, I completely agree. Like me and Luke have this conversation often where we kind of see, well, you, you probably more than me, Lee, but we see like this kind of cyber bullying mentality when people post work. So, or, you know, like if you're reading like a blog post or an article about photos, that remember that guy we were talking about? I don't, probably won't go into too much detail, but he was just like, he was like 10 photos you shouldn't take. Oh, well, why not? yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I don't want to see another umbrella. Well, I might. and it's like it's like all all that should matter at the end of the day is like regardless of what the photo is like if it's been done a million times before if like the person making it is enjoying themselves yeah you know i mean like if it's It's fun it's It's more than just a photo it's an outlet like uh, i i have the same argument i well not argument I, i say that there's other things that i do in my life that helps me switch off right so whether it be going out and taking photos for the day going on a dog walk and happen to have my camera with me sometimes I might just play a game like you know on my xbox for an hour but in that hour I'm zoned out from the world I'm not thinking about work I'm not thinking about money I'm not thinking about you know life problems whatever they might be I'm just chilling do you know what I mean and I think photography it should be promoted that that's another outlet. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, like you said, if someone picks up a camera for the first time, I don't care what they're shooting. I'm going to support that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the one thing that I've, I learned over the years, like doing uh, photography and video production for like 15 years now, um, full time. It's been interesting now to like, look back and analyze like my, uh, kind of wants and my focus and my direction over those years, because for the first while it was like very much, and not that I, not that I was like promoting this, but like trying to do bigger, bigger things, right? Like bigger yeah. projects, just, um, you know, almost as like, not like recognition and to feel like I'm accomplishing more and like bigger budget stuff. And now it's, it, what's funny is like, now how I think about it is like, there's still things that I want to accomplish, uh, of course, but like, now I'm just like, like how much does this stuff actually matter? Do you know what I mean? Like when I'm gone, how much is this stuff like really going to matter? So like, if I'm sacrificing all of these other things 
to try and like, you know, be like successful or do a bigger project. Like I'm probably giving up a lot, even if that's just like, you know, um, going out to shoot for fun and like making the work that I want that maybe not a ton of people like, or, you know, maybe not going out to shoot because uh, I need to spend more time with my family or something like that. Right. <laughs> like, I, I guess I'm just like really starting to analyze like the, the balance and like, what am I giving up to try and like, you know, make this next thing that is going to get recognized and how much does that actually matter <laughs> yeah 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 but that kind of takes me back to what me and luke were talking about earlier didn't didn't you say about kind of like the instagram and taking photos and how you kind of use that as well well me yeah that's what you were saying about earlier um just in, in general conversation about Before, how different people use social media in different ways but it's not always a negative or a positive well, one of the things that um, resonated with me uh, from one of your recent podcasts that just because of something, I, an image I posted over the weekend was talking about putting something up on social media and it having like this 24 hour, if you're lucky, shelf life and it's gone mm. and then being really happy or really sad uh, and but trying to avoid those extreme emotions Um and look, I had an image that I was really, really happy with. And I was really almost concerned about posting it because not because I wanted it like uh, to do really, really well. I know roughly, you know, how many likes and the limited amount of comments I may well get on an image. And I was just almost like, once it's posted, it feels like it's gone and it's done. And no one's gonna scroll back through my profile other than me. So um, I, it was almost like it's one of those images I'd like other people to see. And I did post it and it did actually do a lot better than most of anything that I've posted for a long time. Uh, it has really done. And, you know, OK, it's happy with that and everything. But it made me realise I'm actually sitting on loads of photos I really like because I don't want them to die they're just sat there in a folder waiting to be posted and so it's almost like I've got it the other way around like rather than being happy or sad I'm just like I'm just gonna leave them they're gonna go up there eventually um most of them to kind of let them go rather yeah, than yeah like the hole in my pocket so it's like well my you know dropbox I should say so I'm like just just get them out there get them because some of the photos were shot, me and Jamie went to London a couple of weeks ago and we don't get the opportunity to do that very often. So it's like that feeling of not wanting to waste them, but you're like, they're not being wasted. <laughs> they're still there. And it's, yeah. I suppose it goes back to that thing of, um, it's that, yeah, like maybe 24 hour or even less cycle. Um, and what are you shooting them for? What are you taking these images for? And it's gotta be more than sticking them on Instagram, I guess. But yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I think like, and we're all guilty of this. It's hard to like avoid, but uh, mm -hmm. like, I think you really have to treat social media just as like one tool and kind of disconnect. Like, I think, I mean, all of us get so strategic about it and overthink it and overthink the response or the lack of response or when should I post and how many images and this and that. And like the, and I'm, I go through waves, especially, you know, doing YouTube now, like full time, which is a whole nother uh, yeah. beast <laughs> for sure. But what, like what I have learned and what I try to remind myself is like, you just got to disconnect most, almost always the things that I thought weren't going to do good, do great. The things that I thought were going to do great, don't do great. And yeah. when I overthink when I should post and all this kind of stuff, like it just ends up complicating the process. Like I just look at it as like, it's all a pool that you're like, if you want to share your work and share a message and help people, the most important thing is like consistency and uh, having some sort of a purpose behind it. That's the, that's the one big problem I think with social media is like you make this like page about yourself. So everyone just talks about themselves. Right. Which is like, I mean, we're all guilty of it, but it all of a sudden becomes like a, uh, like a me, 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 like, you know, here's my stuff. Here's an image here. I'm doing this. Now I'm selling prints. Now I'm, uh, now I'm doing this, which like, there's nothing wrong with any of that. But I think when people uh, are like 
struggling or maybe like challenged with growing their accounts, if that's what they want to do. The reason is because that's all it is, right? It's like the business that starts a social media page and their first post is then uh, announcing their sale on the weekend before they've spent any time to like drum up a community and connect with an audience. And I think the same applies for like personal accounts, even with photography, right? Like comment on other people's work, right? Follow yeah. other people, send people like messages, support other artists. Like you don't have to go overboard with it, but I like, and don't, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people doing that kind of stuff. You guys with your front photography, right? It's very much doing these conversations and trying to like add to the community. But I think that's like, I, there's nothing wrong, obviously, with sharing your work and making a website and a social media account about yourself. But I think you also have to go and like, you know, support other people. Like, I, I always think this, the one thing I think about a lot is like, we're all, we're all looking to like achieve something with our work, right? Like put out an image that does something where we get a response. But the crazy thing is, is like, you could make an impact that's 10 times that amount by just like messaging someone whose photography you like and saying, Hey, you know, that photo you posted the other day, like, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Like I've been really enjoying your work lately. And like yeah, yeah. the impact you'll have with that will be 10 times the amount you would have by posting uh, an image. The fact that somebody's gone out their way to drop you yeah. a message yeah. of support, or even if it's feedback, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like even if it's negative, it's yeah. still it's still feedback, right? Yeah. But you can appreciate someone going out of their way. They've been inspired enough for good or bad reason yeah. to shout, you know, physically message you and say, this is what I think. And that, yeah, like you said, 100%, that's more powerful. And it's quite interesting because since we've kind of started front, uh, all of our focus has been on front, right? We want to, yeah. we, we've got a goal that we want to achieve that we believe can help the community in a, in a unique way. And that's kind of put a backseat on my own personal kind of social media pre presence when it comes to photography. I've stopped using hashtags. I've stopped, and then I keep going through stages of, do I write about my image? Do I just post it? Because I kind of see my personal one as, it's there for me to look back at. It's like a time trail, right? But yeah. then at the same time, I'm like, same as Luke, like I sit on images that I, I like because I'm like, well, I don't want it to be wasted. But at the same time, I'm like, well, that's, I want it to document a timeline of, of what sure. I've been doing. Do you know what I mean? And like you said earlier, I might get burnt out. I might get burnt out and need to, need to step away for six months or six years or two days, whatever it might be. But everyone's, everyone's got their own individual kind of thought process around their photography and how they want to promote it, whether it be social media or print or book or, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think for sure. And, and I think, I mean, it's the same as anything is like community. Community yeah. is so important, helping, you know, other people, you know, supporting other people, trying to contribute something that goes a, like a long way in terms of like building yourself up as an artist as well. I mean, not that that should be the, the purpose, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, and I just think that comes with the platforms. Like I said, you know, these pages about ourselves where it feels like, okay, time to, you know, another day, time to say something else about my, my photography. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It's funny, like, that you said that as well, because that was kind of, it's just made me think, that was kind of how we started doing Front, because there was yes. a photographer, his name's Josh Francis, and he's just a, a kind of random person that I was following, and I saw a, pin, a picture and was like, oh, I love it. And uh, messaged him and said, if you ever sell any prints, I'll buy that. And he, about six months later, was like, I've got some prints. Do you want to buy one still? And he's in America. And it was a real like hassle for us to get that printed and sent over. And I was like, there's got to be an easier way of doing this. Maybe some kind of website he could upload it to and... I could buy it via that website, you know, like didn't exist in this country. Yeah. So that kind of spurred everything on. Um, but it was like a really nice interaction and we still continue, like this was probably a year ago. Uh, he was on a podcast a couple of months back. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he's we, now a friend, right? Yeah, we speak, like I speak to him fairly regularly um, via, you know, DM and stuff like that and like just check in and it's like, uh, I hadn't thought about doing that again and like maybe I should because it's really <laughs> yeah like we've just and, like, random people yeah that's that's for me that honestly that's what it's all about and I'm not saying like I'm at, I, like every day I'm messaging 18 people telling them how awesome their no, is. like I certainly get wrapped up in my own stuff and oh, I gotta 
you know, get a video out and get photos out and all this kind of stuff. But I think that that is like where it's at. And for me, that's been like the most fulfilling out of doing all this online stuff is like, I'll get emails from people every now and then or messages just like, you know, telling me about some video or, or, you know, some podcasts they listen to and how it helped them. And I'm just like, that's, that that's kind of what it's all about. Yeah. 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 Just um, changing the subject slightly, I'm just conscious about the times. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally four hours worth of questions I want to ask you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I was just going to ask you about the film that you use, maybe at the moment, and maybe what you work. So I know that you're using like a lot of black and white at the moment. Um, well, I don't know. Are you? Do you know what I mean? I, that, I guess that's a question. But me personally, I've been inspired to shoot more black and white through some of your recent work. And I think it's just because, again, you're here in the UK. And I've kind of seen things, I've, I've kind of put myself in your shoes, so to speak, and gone, why is that better in black and white? Or mm. why is that better in colour? Or, And I've kind of, it's kind of made me think about how I shoot. And is that kind of something you've always wanted to kind of get across? And Because I always think your videos are very personal, mm. but at the same time, they leave it kind of open at the same time to make you think about your own work. And is that something you've always kind of wanted to to get out there, I guess? Uh, like black and white work uh yeah 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 black well black and white color just your photography in general you always wanted to inspire people to go out oh okay uh, sorry sorry I, I gotcha gotcha i i missed missed uh misinterpreted your question i think i started off talking about black and white <laughs> it's all good. You know, bad analogy yeah sorry it's all good no um um yeah like uh, certainly ever since i've got on social media that's been a big part of it like before when i was doing landscape photography before um but kind of before like instagram and all that stuff i had a blog that i wrote called uh i think it was that's a throwback i think it was called image and rhythm uh but it was basically a, a blog where i interviewed photographers and i it was kind of like the contact sheet but blog form like diving into the process um so i think like yeah what's led me to that is just like i have certainly been and maybe the, I think this is probably similar for a lot of people, but I like my creative career has been a roller coaster of ups and downs, like, you know, inspired, not inspired, want to quit, don't want to quit, all this kind of stuff. So, and I think we all go through that, but I think when you can kind of talk about that and, and relate, um, that helps everyone. And then at the same time too, just talking about like process, like that always interests me. Like, so shooting black and white or shooting color when I, you know, you hear about other photographers reasons for doing things like that always just like has, uh, certainly given me ideas and inspired me a little bit. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think I've just been like naturally uh, gone in that direction to like, just talk about my process and very much like, I never want to be the person who's like, you should use this or you shouldn't yeah, yeah. use that. That sucks. You know what I mean? But, and there's a lot of that, uh, across all kind of genres, um, where people get wrapped up in like the tools they like and forget that not everyone likes the same thing. So I, I think like, just like sharing my experience, this is why I use it and then leave it open like yeah, yeah. Try it. you don't have to try it maybe you hate it that's cool too but uh yeah yeah just i guess encouraging people to experiment yeah i suppose that relates back to the contact sheet the podcast itself like i'm guessing that's one of the reasons you wanted to start that so you could reach out connect with people and help tell their story their version of what what they do yeah yeah for sure i haven't uploaded uh an episode in like three months though <laughs> so, yeah yeah i know yeah you yeah I, which is like on, on, honestly like I'm not super happy about, I really wanted to keep that going consistently, but like I got to a point with YouTube and then, uh, Instagram and a pod, like podcast. We also have like a, a, a pretty young daughter. Um, so it's just been like managing all that. And, uh, I had to kind of, I'm still, I don't, that podcast is not going away, but like, I've been certainly someone in the past who's just been like, and then I'll do this and then I'll do this yeah, and then yeah, I'll yeah. do this. And now I'm like, as I get older, I'm like, okay, I need to like, you know, I can't work life balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so important. So is that, is that one of the reasons you actually moved to the UK then for like, was it based around family? Yeah. Yeah. Like my wife's from here. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Our daughter's two now. So she was born in Canada right before we came over, but we came to be closer to, to her family here. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 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 That's great. Do you have some, um, we asked some people on Instagram, didn't we? Do you have any have like questions? Yeah, yeah, I've got a few. Well, one of them was why did you move to the UK? Um, I had one question about your general thoughts on the price of film. Does, <laughs> it, does it sway you to buy a certain film because it might be cheaper or does it make you feel like, you know, a bit rarer to when you've got one that's a bit more expensive? 
Yeah, I mean, this has been that's an interesting conversation, obviously, just because Kodak released that, you know, pretty decent price increase on their color films. And like film isn't cheap to begin with. I shoot Portrait 400 for all my color work. I just shot like 20 rolls of it on this last trip. Uh, So like, obviously, no one was excited to see those price increases. Um, But I am certainly like, I'm not like, Again, you know, we're Luke, we're talking about these like extremes, right? With social media. And that ha- that happens, I think, also with how people react to things, right? So there's this out like outcry right away where people are like, screw Kodak, I'm going to Ilford. You know, they're just trying to, you know, ride this this film wave and gouge everyone for all their money while they can. And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm sure they aren't all these executives sitting in a boardroom being like, yes, you know, jump on it while they're in while they're into it. Um so much has changed over the last year and a half COVID also like, you know, film went through this major dip and then they probably didn't anticipate that it was going to come back as strong as it has. So like, there's probably just a lot going on behind the scenes that none of us really know about. I'm not stoked that there's been a huge increase in price. I'm still going to buy Portra 400 just because that's what I shoot. It's going to be a little more difficult to afford for sure now, but I'm, you know, I'm not one to jump on it right away and just be I'm like, guessing you'd rather have it available at more expensive than the company go bust. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. It sucks. Like I was looking up, uh, yeah. uh, I was looking up prices for it the other day and I'm just like, man, it is getting expensive for sure. I mean, shooting black and white now, that certainly helps. Like I've been shooting Ilford, obviously living here in England, it's quite cheap for some HP5, which is great. So uh, that's what I'll shoot oh, was, here. Was it a lot more in Canada though, was it? Well, I, I don't know because I didn't shoot... Um, I didn't shoot black and white in Canada, but looking it up, it is definitely a little bit cheaper here than you would oh, pay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, always interesting to hear that kind of side of things from depending on where you are. Because I know like Kodak Gold is cheaper in some parts of the States than than it is kind of like for a role of Color Plus. Yeah. But yeah. And here, yeah, Color Plus was our kind of go to cheap and cheerful film stock. Yeah. Uh, they, they've, no, I mean, no. they've all gone up. I, and it, I guess like, it, it's easy for me to kind of comment on, you know, how it affects me. I know everyone's in different positions, right? Like film for, it all depends on what you can afford. And and maybe those price increases really will affect some people in terms of their decisions. I know for me personally, like, uh, I I don't know how much it went up. Is it like $20 a, a pro pack or maybe a little more than that? Still, even still, I mean, that, again, that sucks. But for me, I wouldn't stop shooting portrait 400 if i had to spend an extra 20 dollars per five rolls even though like it's not great but it's just i get it is what it is hopefully at, at some point it starts to come back down or we all do you find yourself kind of going through waves or have you now got to a point where you're like right well, like, i'm portrait 400 and hp5 or do you still get the bug sometimes to go oh new film stock i'm gonna try that or do you know what i mean i would say most of that now is for the channel black and white for sure because i I never shot black and white until i moved over here so there was like again there was this like you know initial like i think when we all get into film there's this novelty at at first right where it's like oh and then this film stock might look like this and this one and now all the cameras give me all the films i want everything and i mean and i still dabble with all that stuff just for the channel to make videos but when i go to make my my personal work i'm very much now in a position where i'm like i just want the camera that I know works and I want the film stock that I know how it's going to turn out and how I have to expose it. So when I want to make an image, I know it's going to turn out and I can work with it after. So yeah. uh, for me, that's portrait, pretty much portrait 400 shooting some portrait 160. Basically any of the portraits, I mean, they're also similar. Yeah. 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 It's that's really interesting. Yeah. I kind of, I really <laughs> went for that. I was like, right, I'm just shooting portrait and Ilford Delta and that's going to be it. I found the two films that I really like. I've still got about 17 rolls of film in my fridge that are completely like all these random weird things and stuff like that. And I kind of like never really got to that point, but where um, it's sometimes quite nice having these odd little films to use because you feel a bit less precious about them. Like mm-hmm. I used this before, I'll probably never use it again. And it's just like a little experimental film. So it feels a little bit more freeing sometimes just to go and just shoot whatever, because you're just trying to see what the film can do and it's almost like a bit more of an experiment than a i'm trying to be uh, incredibly creative i just want to see want to see what the results are um totally. and when i've got these expensive films like i did buy a load of ill for the portrait and then i was like oh, don't touch it don't take it <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i feel the funny thing is like uh, there was someone who watches the channel who sent me super kind of them they sent me like a 
a brick of expired film. They like inherited a, a lab and it came with like this massive thing of Fuji C200 that was expired from like wow. 2004. So they sent me like 20 rolls of it, just super cool. Wow. Um, so I shot a roll of it for uh, a contacts video that I put out recently, but it's so funny because I never shoot expired film. And I find now like all I did when I got the results was try to make it not look like expired film, <laughs> you know, like editing. I'm like, oh, there's such like this red cast and the shadows and the shadows are flat. And I'm just like- The, the novelty so of it time. kind of worn off by the time you got the results. Yeah. For sure. Whereas when I, I mean, the first six months I was back into film, one of the things I did is bought like a point shoot from a thrift store and shot. I found like, I went to some like church bake sale. We were in like Arizona. I don't even know how I found it, but they had like old 35 millimeter, like expired film that I bought. And I was just like having so much fun shooting that. Whereas now I think I'm just like, yeah, just want to like, when I'm making work, I want to like know what I'm working with basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's understandable. Interesting. The only, the only, sorry, like, you, you go, mate. I was just going to say, it's interesting mentioning Fuji as well, being like the Kodak thing. I suppose that's the the other option, isn't it? If they don't put their prices up for whatever the reason is, then they end up like Fuji, who used to have about 24 different films that you could buy, and now there's like three or something. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah. I think... Yeah. No, I, yeah, and Fuji also, right? Then I think, I mean, again, we're, the, these are just all assumptions, right? But like Fuji has like this, um, you know, digital camera line that's just like booming. Right. Yeah. And from a business standpoint, uh, again, I would love to see all their film stocks not go away, even though I wasn't the hugest fan of, of their color films. But uh, yeah, they're probably just like, it doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. And then again, with Kodak, who knows, like maybe they got rid of a ton of equipment and now they need to reinvent. Like there's mm -hmm. so much that like a lot of us don't know. It's just, it is easy for us as film shooters to be reactive in situations like that, where we're like, I'm not buying that. That's 50p more now. Well, you know, the cost yeah. of living goes up every year. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So does their business yeah. probably. Yeah. And, and even just purely from a, a standpoint of like, you know, we all do this in a dark, like, it's funny. Every time I go to buy film, it's like, I forget that it's expensive. <laughs> like yeah, every yeah. time I go to buy film, I'm like, man, this is like really like 75 quid for like five <laughs> rolls. Like, did it go, did, did something go up? But uh, so I think obviously when there's a price increase, like our initial reaction for all of us is going to be like, you know, arms in the air. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to like book stock once, like once, you know, would you go out and buy a hundred rolls of film or would you go out and buy what you need for that, that trip or that video or, you know, your personal project, whatever it might be? Yeah. I have like a decent amount in my freezer. A lot of it though, going back to like the weird random film stocks is stuff that I just like, you know, was, I have like, I think I have like Fuji Provia from like two years ago that I wanted to like test out and I have Cinestill and all this stuff that again, now that that novelty's worn off, it's just sitting there. So, um, a lot of the stuff now I'll, I'll go and buy like maybe 10 rolls or 15 rolls of Portra and, you know, like five rolls of HP five, like enough that's there. For instance, like last week when I wanted to la like go and do this trip, that was kind of like a, a last minute plan. I knew I had like film in the fridge to, to go and do yeah, it. I didn't yeah, have to yeah. scramble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. We, uh, and then what, what you, I, well, I was gonna, just going to ask one question um, that we got on Instagram. We, a lot of them we've kind of already covered or somewhat covered, but it was just more about, uh, well, the question is, what do you think is the most important aspect of documentary uh, documentary making when it comes to like your videos? Because it's, it'd be interesting to find out exactly what it is that your kind of goal is, I guess. Yeah, or like with the films, like the documentary, like yeah. films. Um, what inspires you to kind of do those, I guess? I think like a curiosity in other people and like this uh, interest in trying to like uh, share other people's uh, stories and maybe give other like the audience uh, some something to think about. I think a lot of the stories that I do are like diving deep into like the why behind uh, yeah. people's kind of uh, life journeys. And sometimes those people are like you know um, kind of like quirky eccentric people who um, like the general public might at first make assumptions about or criticize. But I think it's just like diving deep into people's um, stories to to maybe like just share some experiences or inspire other people. Um, mm. But I think for like any filmmaker, the most important thing, especially nowadays, again, social media, like there's this temptation to like, just make, you know, make something that's going to get people's attention. Right. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're, you're, like, it's an uphill battle. A lot of us are fighting trying to get our work seen. So like that's where you get like clickbaity stuff and thumbnails. And I think the same comes with filmmaking where like it can be easy to stray away from like, like as a filmmaker, you can make that person's story anything you want. Like you have the power to shape it. So I think it's important to really stay like true to their story and not like, um, like it's easy to make things really dramatic when maybe they aren't right. If you, by the music you use and the way you color grade things and light things, or you can shift their interview around and maybe tell a story that isn't really exactly how it was. And it, that can be tempting at times if you are trying to like, you know, grab people's attention or maybe wow an audience. So I think like also if you're doing documentary work and it's like it's someone else's story you're telling, um, really to make sure you're staying true to, true to what it is and not uh, glorifying things. Is there any plans in 2022 that you can talk about or any ideas for projects that you're, you've got coming up or is it just going to be kind of somewhat the same as this year but continuing? Yeah, you know what? Like, again, I shouldn't say I wish. Like, the, the great answer would be if I could say, like, oh, man, I got some, like, secret things coming. But, like, honestly, my life is just not that... I shouldn't say not that exciting either. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not that cool anymore. As oh, like, well, so but, well, <laughs> like going back to the whole balance thing, right? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny, man. Even like even over the past year, I have found myself shaving things off. Like at the start of this year, I had a big list of things I wanted, like multiple courses. There was a photo community that I wanted to launch through Patron. Um, there was um, my podcast continuing. I was writing a newsletter, which I still am. It hasn't gone out in a few months, but that will continue. All of these things um, that, like, I think the there's always this, like, uh, draw for us to do more and more and grow that thing and make it bigger and do the next thing and launch this and grind and hustle and but like, uh, yeah, happy like, where you are now. Or why well, trying to change that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just think like, I'm realizing how important it is for me. Like last week when I went out for those couple days to shoot, and then, then I abandoned the idea for the video because I was just enjoying photography. It was like such a good reminder of like, this is what, like just getting out and shooting the things I want. And then also just like balance with like family and, and things like that. And maybe that's not like the flashy answer, but for me, like, I guess like I just got to a point where I'm like, I don't want to continue in this trend for the next 15 years where I'm neglecting all this stuff and starting to hate what I'm doing because I'm just trying to like become more successful. So if anything, I'm trying to like sustain my love for my craft, uh, like help other people. And then also just like give a lot of the other things in my life, uh, like the attention that that they deserve mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you carry a camera around with you like day to day life with family as well? No, never. Not really? No. Because so we, we actually asked... Um, We've asked a couple of people this. It's like, do you feel like you always need, uh, are you one of those people that always has the camera on you to never miss a moment or do you learn to put it down and you're okay with that? Yeah, I think it just comes with the type of photography I do. Like yeah. with so much of my photography is by myself alone out in like some pretty quiet place. So uh, yeah, I, like when I'm out, out and about, I rarely have one with me. Yeah, you're yeah. happy with a selfie on your iPhone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then like they, nine hundred of them live on there forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was I was literally talking about this the other day. My phone's due for an upgrade, and I was like, I've got three thousand photos that I'm never gonna realistically look through again. Well, yeah. like, you know, because I always save the ones that I, I want to keep, or I'll put them onto a hard drive. Do you know what I mean? But it's kind of nice to have a fresh start. But then you kind of totally. think, oh, am I gonna look at those again? But I don't yeah. Know. 